In this video, we are going to solve for the value of the variable in these three logarithmic expressions. Okay, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so get ready for fun. Um, now, as we do this, we're going to wind up using the following fact. Um, you can convert back and forth between exponent form and logarithmic form. I'm just going to say log form. Exponent form is like this. Um, if I have a number raised to an exponent, no, let me, let me say it a different way. If I have a base raised to an exponent equal to a number, then this is exponent form. I can capture that same information using a logarithm. I will start off with that LOG for logarithm. And then I have the base, which goes here as a uh, subscript. And then these two things will switch sides of the equation. So the N is going to come over here, and the E is going to go over there. All right, you're going to see me do that a couple of times as I work through this problem, these problems. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, so let's go ahead and rewrite this in exponent form. All right, we're starting in log form. Let's see what this looks like in exponent form. Um, this is the base. Always start with the base. So, um, you know what? I hope you don't mind if I use a capital letter A instead of a lowercase a because, you know, a lowercase a is at a zero, is it a nine? It's, uh, it's too ambiguous. So, anyway, start with the base. The other two things are going to sort of switch sides. So, this and this will wind up changing sides of the equation. So of course the base is going to get an exponent, so this negative 3 is going to come over here and become the exponent. Uh, and this entire fraction is going to go over here, 1 over 512. So this is going to be a lot easier for me to analyze. I'm looking for what a is. Um, now, negative 3 power. Negative exponents don't make you negative. They drop you down. So this is going to drop down to the denominator and become 1 over a to the third power. Okay, that's what negative exponents do. Hmm. So I'm seeing some parallels lining up here. I have 1 over a to the third power. I have 1 over 512. What if I could rewrite 512 as something to the third power? That would tell me what A is. Let's look at the chart that we're allowed to use. Um, and there it is, 512. Well, that's 8 to the third power. Okay. All right, can you tell what A is by looking at this? I have 1 over A to the third power. I have 1 over... 8 to the third power. So I guess a must equal 8 by logic. Um, so a is equal to 8. You know, it, it occurs to me that there's another way that I could have solved this. Um, my first step would still be the same, but let me go back and solve this another way. Um, wait, go away line. All right, another way I could solve this is um, if I want to get rid of this negative 3. I could do both um, sides of the equation to the negative 1 third power. Okay, that would cancel this out. A negative times a negative is a positive, And then the 1 third and 3 over 1, they cancel each other out. So that would just give me A. Okay, so now A is by itself. So now I just have to simplify this. Well, if I have a negative power, um, 
what I, I can just do the reciprocal and make it positive. Uh, in other words, I'm using this property. If you have a over b, let's say, to the negative 2 power, that would be the same thing as b over a to the positive 2 power. Okay, if you didn't already know that, memorize it. It's good stuff. So anyway, I'll do the reciprocal of this, um, but the reciprocal of 1 over 512 is just 512. And then now I've got a positive 1 third power. I don't do the reciprocal of that. Um, so I just need to know what this is. Well, 512 to the 1 third power is the same thing as the cube root of 512. All right, so the cube root of 512 is 8. All right, so either way I get the same answer, but that's another way. Now you have two shots at it. All right, I'm going to try to give you as many angles as possible um, to approach these problems. All right, let's try another one. Um, yep, once again, I'm going, going to rewrite this in exponent form. Always start with the base. So my base is 1 over 27. Now these two things are going to switch sides of the equation. Um, so I'm going to have the 4 over 3 power is going to come over um, to this base. And then I'll have x over here by itself. So look, x is already by itself. Um, by the way, this little mark is not doing anything. x is already by itself. Um, so all I have to do is simplify this. Um, okay, so how do I do the 4 over 3 power um, to a fraction? Well, uh, understand this. When you do a power to a fraction, you're just going to do the power to the numerator and the denominator separately. So this would be like 1 to the 4 over 3 power over 27 to the 4 thirds power. How much space do I have? Um, of course, 1 to any power is just going, going to be 1. So that doesn't change anything. So I just have to do this denominator, really. So um, when you have a fractional power, it is in the form power over root. So this is really the cube root because of the 3. So I have the cube root of 27 and then 4 is the power which I like to put on the outside like this okay let's see how much space do I have before I run into the next problem um, I have a little more space so I'm gonna go over here so the cube root of 27 is 3 so then I have 3 to the fourth power And 3 to the 4th power turns out to be 81. So the final answer is 1 over 81. And we could use our chart for as far as the 3 to the 4th power. There you go. Okay, 1 over 81. That is how you do number 19. Okay, last problem. Um, this one is different because I already have n by itself. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, I could rewrite this as 125 to the n power is equal to 5. I could do that, but I don't want to. And I don't need to. I could just evaluate this straight away. And that's going to give me the answer. And so the way I evaluate logarithms is I ask myself, what power will turn this base into this other number? All right, what power will turn 125 into a 5? Well, um, if I'm trying to turn 125 into a 5, um, okay, what power is going to change 125 into a 5? I've got a big number becoming a smaller number. The only way that's going to happen is if I'm doing some kind of a root. All right, so what kind of root will turn 125 into a 5? Is it square root? Is it cube root? 
let's look at the chart. Okay, there's 125. Uh, the cube root of 125 is 5. Okay, the cube root of 125 is 5. Um, so that's the same thing as 125 to the 1 third power is equal to 5. Okay, so you know what? When I think about it, I guess I actually am rewriting this in exponent form after all. Um, that's what I'm doing anyway, so I might as well just confess. Um, if I rewrite this in exponent form, like the way I did on the other two problems, I start with the base, which is 125, and then these two things sort of switch sides. Um, so I've got 125 to the n power is equal to 5. Okay, fine. So I'm looking for what n is. Um, but now, look at these two equations. Look at this equation and compare to what we found here. All right, we just discovered that 125 to the 1 third power is equal to 5. So that means n must be 1 third. All right, a little bit of logic there at the end. Um, so that's it. That is how you solve problem number 20. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you on the next video.